All right, we are back. Going to be doing a detailed study now on what is the first resurrection. Um, I've heard this thing for so long. Oh, well, the first resurrection proves that this proves a pre-trib rapture because uh, how could saints be in heaven if the first resurrection doesn't even happen till the end of the thousand-year reign? It's one of the worst arguments out there. But let's start out here. If you watch the other study, we're going to start here where we left off. Revelation chapter 20, verses 4 through 6. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And it's important to read along in your King James Bible. Please do that. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Okay, now notice a couple important things there. Uh, number one, they're beheaded, beheaded for the witness of Jesus and the word of God, lowercase w, written word of God. Now, the new version philosophy that's out there, the Alexandrian natural textual criticism type of thing, naturalistic textual criticism, they say that the word of God in, in terms of a perfect Bible has uh, ceased to exist with the original autographs, that it was somehow called up to be with God and whatever else. Uh, no, there's a Bible in the end times that is called the Word of God. Okay? God's Word exists in a physical form and people are being killed for it in the future. Almost like the catching up happens and all the people that get caught up believe in a certain Bible. <clears throat> I won't say the name, you know, <coughs> King James Version. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, and they, people get angry about that and they say, how dare those King James only fanatic cult people like the Catholics try to make us out to be. Um, see, this is the cult and we, we need to put these, if there's any of these people left, we need to stop them from doing anything else violent and whatever else. So they start putting them to death. Yeah. But notice that these people, um, he says here in verse 4, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Jump down to the end there, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Okay? They're living and reigning with Christ a thousand years. You say, but well, it's just souls. It's just the souls there. We'll continue with that. Verse 5, But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand year years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Now, a lot of people say, well, see, nobody gets resurrected before that. Well, that's a problem because we already saw the souls there. And I'm going to show you that there were others that were resurrected before that as we continue in this study. But you see, the first resurrection is saying this is the first resurrection. It means the, there was a bunch of stuff that happened and this is the first resurrection. That ends the first resurrection. Okay? Um, if I say to you, uh, this here, the, this, this place is the first dwelling that I've built. Well, that doesn't mean it existed beforehand or something or what. It just means this is the final place that I've built. Say it that way. Maybe not the best analogy. But Jesus Christ is saying this is the first resurrection. And I'm going to show you that there's multiple parts to it. It isn't that nobody got resurrected before then. I mean, think about the most obvious one. Did Jesus Christ come up from the dead? Yes. How could it be the first resurrection then? You say, well, first resur resurrection of people. We'll get back to that. Blessed and holy is he that hath part, verse 6, in the first resurrection, on such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Like I said in the end of the other study, how can you reign with Christ for a thousand years if the, if you're, if the first resurrection is at the end of the thousand years and nobody comes up before then? Okay, don't fall for this post-trib stuff. It's nonsense. But let me show you some resurrections that happened. Okay, Matthew chapter 27. Turn back to Matthew chapter 27 in your King James Bible. Matthew 27, verses 50 through 53. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. So Jesus dies. There's a little time interval here, a couple days. You know, he dies and rises again the third day. And you don't see that recorded there. But, you know, he dies. 
he gives up the ghost there in yielded up the ghost in verse 50, but they come out of the graves in verse 53 after his resurrection. So there you see, well, it's the first resurrection. It's not over till the, the first resurrection doesn't happen till the end of the thousand years. But what is the first resurrection? It certainly doesn't mean that nobody comes up from the dead because Jesus Christ comes up here in this passage and the Old Testament saints do as well. Hmm. So don't let people fool you into this thing of, well, the first resurrection isn't until the end of the thousand years, so there's no pre-trib rapture because dead and living saints can't come up before the end of the thousand years. That doesn't work. Okay? Very, very important to understand that. I actually asked uh, Stephen Anderson the one time, I said, what happened to the saints that arose in Matthew chapter 27? And you know what he said? He said they went back down again. <laughs> uh, chapter and verse, please. Where does it say that they, they came up, you know, just kind of showed themselves to people in the city and, okay, let's go back down again. We weren't supposed to get up yet. <laughs> kind of like naughty children that woke up from a nap or something, I guess. It's supposed to go back to sleep for a while. To wait till the end of the thousand years and then they can get up. Nonsense. Go to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. Verse 21 through 26. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Now look at her answer. Verse 24. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Hmm. And now, you know, in context, this is before Jesus dies on the cross and is resurrected. So she would have heard about the saints, maybe even saw some of the Old Testament saints coming out of the graves and appearing unto many. So she would have understood the resurrection better then. But the whole point is, you know, she's saying, I know that there's going to be a resurrection at the last day. One day is with the Lord is a thousand years. Hmm. She's saying in her mind, I know that he's going to come up. Lazarus will see him again at the last day, at the end of the thousand year kingdom. And what does Jesus say to her? Verse 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Hmm. Very interesting. Jesus corrects her. I am the resurrection and the life. She's saying, oh, no. well, you know, I'll see my brother again at the last day. You know, what, but what does Jesus do? Go down to verse... Uh, 33 verse 33 when Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping which came with her he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said where have ye laid him they said unto him Lord come and see Jesus wept then said the Jews behold how he loved him and some of them said could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have called that even this man should not have died Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave it was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Do the study on that too, the glory of God. Okay, uh, Rather interesting there. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. See, the resurrection, whenever there is resurrection, Jesus is speaking. Hmm, interesting. Verse 44. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. And you see Lazarus is there and he's fine and everything else. But I thought there was nobody resurrected until the end of the thousand year kingdom. Hmm. Matthew 27. Many of the bodies of the saints which slept arose, came out of the graves. That's a resurrection. Jesus Christ resurrected. Lazarus 
even before Jesus dies on the grave, or dies on the cross and ro rises from the grave, Lazarus, come forth. That's a resurrection. Have you been lied to by these people? Oh, the first resurrection proves that there is no preacher of rapture. Not on your life. No, it doesn't. There were multiple resurrections going on, even before Jesus died on the cross. He resurrects somebody by calling their name. Hmm. You won't get that if you're a post-tribber. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Going over some of the same scriptures here, but it's just so important to get this. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verses 20 through 26. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Uh, see where I'm reading to here. Um, then cometh the end, when he shall deliver up the kingdom to God, even the Father when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. If you watch the other study, you know where this is going. Um, <clears throat> look over at verse uh, 55. Okay, well, we'll do 54. So when this corruptible, the same chapter, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Okay? The last enemy that's defeated is death. Okay, that's why it's the first resurrection. And it doesn't, the first resurrection isn't over. There's multiple parts to it. Old Testament saints. Actually, if you go even before that, you have Lazarus being brought up from the dead. There's resurrection there. And the Lord's raising other people up from the dead too, I might add. So there were multiple resurrections before Jesus dies on the cross and is resurrected. And the Old Testament saints come up with him. And the New Testament saints, Christians in the body of Christ, we go up when the Lord calls our name. Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 10 through 13. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. By the way, you want a verse that, that stumps a post-tribber? Because they try to say that the elect in Scripture is always a reference to saved Christians. Um, no, actually it's a reference to Jews a lot of times. It is a reference to Christians too, sure. But uh, in this passage, it's talking about lost Jews. Look at the verse. Um, Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes. Okay? Talking about Jews. The elect of God there. That they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. That they may also obtain the salvation. They don't have it automatically. Okay? And uh, don't tell me it's some kind of Calvinistic nonsense or something that... Well, he has to endure all things for the elect's sake so that they may also. Uh, may also is, is not saying definite that they will. It's saying hopefully they will, essentially. <laughs> Don't believe in Calvinism or replacement theology, in other words. But look at verse 11. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. All right, very important to understand that. The thing that gets you to a point where you can reign with Jesus Christ in the thousand-year kingdom, okay, is if you suffer for him. Talked about that in other studies. Very important to get that thing. But here's the point. How can we reign with Jesus Christ if the resurrection isn't until the end of the thousand-year kingdom? Don't fall for it, okay? Uh, please do not fall for that. Go next to Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5, verses 8 through 12. <clears throat> Let's 
says here, And when he had taken uh, the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Twenty-four elders, they're in heaven before the Antichrist is unleashed in chapter 6. You say, well, who are the twenty-four elders? Well, I don't know their names, but it's very obvious who they are. If you go back to Deuteronomy chapter... Is it 28 or 38? I'm trying to think here. This isn't. I don't have this in my notes. Um, is it 38, I think. Or is it 32? <laughs> 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 8 and 9. When the Most High divided to the nations their inherit inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Okay, God separated the nations into 12 boundaries, the number of the children of Israel. 12. How many elders are in Revelation chapter 5? 24. What do they say? Hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. It's not 12 apostles and 12 uh, Jewish patriarchs or something. That's the 24 elders. No, it's not. Okay? It's two from each of the 12 nations. What, who are they? What are they? I don't know. I have no idea who it is. But it's crystal clear. Okay? And the, but the biggest and most important thing is you have resurrected saints in heaven before the, the time of Jacob's trouble, the people call it the Great Tribulation, before it even gets started. They're there in heaven. You say, well, there's only 24, though. Keep reading. Verse 11, And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, a little over 100 million in other words, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. You might want to practice that if you're redeemed because that's what you're going to be saying someday. Uh, in the resurrection they neither mar marry nor are given in, in marriage but are as the angels of God in heaven. I mean, I just keep beating the same stuff over and over again because a lot of people just aren't getting it. Uh, there are a lot of, you know, false converts out there and things. But uh, this whole post-trib system, um, for the brethren, you know what I'm saying. You, you understand it's false. Um, if you're newly, you know, saved and you're being led away, led astray by the, the error of the wicked people out there telling you that the first resurrection isn't over till the, you know, the first resurrection doesn't happen until the end of the thousand years. I mean, just a simple understanding of Scripture. The verses we've gone through, it just destroys it. Okay? Um, there's multiple parts to the resurrection. There's many resurrections that happened. Okay? Before the first resurrection at the end. Okay? That what it's called the first resurrection. It's a big time there. Okay? Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 talks about that. But, you know, I just wanted to cover this because I don't know if I've done an actual dedicated study on this issue of the first resurrection. Um, it has multiple parts to it. So if I don't have a study, then I do now. Um, if I have it, well, then I've just reiterated what we already know. Um, if you're lost, I really think you, you know, just you need to get saved. You need to repent of your selfish uh, self-righteousness and, and whatever else, your pride. Uh, you're wrong if you're a post-tribber. Um, trying to say that a Christian goes through that time period. If you're lost in a post-tribber, well, you are correct then. You are going into that time period. <laughs> so that is going to be it um, for this study. A lot of different scriptures to go through, but uh, a lot of other things coming out. And um, looking forward to preaching some other big studies coming up here. But I just... I keep seeing this thing, and I, and I think, you know, I might have forgotten have I done a video on it or whatever else, but just wanted to get it out there. And um, I do believe that the time is coming near when the Lord is going to say, okay, come up hither. 
you know, this world's in such a mess. And uh, I just, I want to make sure people get this thing straightened out. Um, the resurrection is what you're looking for if you're saved. You're listening for it, I should say. You're listening for your voice to be called. Um, you're not looking for the Antichrist to show up. And if you start falling for this thing of you've got to look for the Antichrist and whatever else, you've been deceived. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to all who support the ministry. That means a lot. Um, keeps us going. And uh, we'll be doing a ministry update at some time here in the future. Uh, it's still winter time out there. That's why you see all the light out there, all the snow and everything. Um, but we'll, we'll update people on what all is going on. And uh, look forward to continue, continuing to preach the word. And uh, I guess we'll see you in the next study. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.